Oh my god, Phil, there's no time! There's, uh, there, there's no time to explain! How, how much time are we talking about exactly? This is gonna be the shortest overview ever, because it's 30 seconds long. Oh, great. Uh, um, it's gonna be real hard to sell ads against this kind of content, but I'm not too worried about the money. For me, it's more about like the art and- uh, It's about the passion. The passion and just the work and the doing. We don't have time for this kind of navel gazing. We we need to go. We, we already wasted like 15 seconds. It's almost out. Uh, we're playing Half Minute Hero, the second coming. Uh, which sounds like a remake title, but it's it's not. It's a sequel. It's a sequel. Sequel. To Half it's Minute a surprise because a lot of people didn't think that Half Minute Hero, the sequel, would ever be coming to the U.S. Because it's a it, weird ass game, dude. It's a weird game. Um, I so I admit I did not play the original, uh, just because of how weird Whoa. it totally sounded. Uh, yeah, I mean we're kind of starting things off with the bass. You're uh, for somebody who didn't play the original, you're just. Well, I learned I learned very quickly that 30 seconds is not a lot of time, so I should go very fast. Mm -hmm. um, it is a god. What do you role playing game? I guess. It's, I, I it's guess a, it's a role playing sort game. Sort of a role playing game, action RPG, maybe you could call it. Its constituent role playing elements are very um, streamlined, which by necessity because the game has to move so fast. Um, you have it, it's sort of divided into these different scenarios, these different quests. Uh, that are arranged in a campaign, and you will enter a quest, and the quests are fairly formulaic most of the time. You have 30 you seconds. You are running out of time here. I know. Ah! Boom. You see, I like to do that. I like to hold off until the last, like, hundreds, just because I'm, you know, I'm a gambler. I'm, I'm a risk taker. You got 30 seconds in each scenario before the world is ended. And in that time, you usually have to accomplish an objective, but before you can do that, you need to accomplish other objectives or most of the time get stronger and level up so that you can take on the boss at the end of the quest it's it's all of the for people who like like myself who like really grindy rpgs it is it it's, is grinding it, distilled yeah it's all of the the uh joy of grinding to level up mm -hmm. but within 30 seconds over right. and over again um so you have a goddess who will reverse time for you and reset the clock and give you 30 seconds but you keep all of the gold experience and stuff that you earned in that time um all the monsters that you killed respond but that happens anytime you enter a town or uh building or whatever anyways um and you kind of want monsters to respond because you need to grind on them uh, you yeah. can see i've already reached a point where uh oh also time stands still when you're in towns if you're not playing in hard mode there's a hard mode where time does not stand still when you're in towns oh, great and that sounds like the worst. Um, I don't think that was in the original, so that's a that's an addition for the the truly hardcore. I don't understand how you can even do it because like you need time to stand still, you need time to like think about what you're gonna do next. Because when you're on the map, like the clock is constantly moving, you have to like yeah. figure out your pathing just right. You can see me trying to like Pac-Man my way through, guys, so I don't waste a single hundredth of a second. Um, yeah. And uh, really, you don't want to reset the clock until there's like less than a second left, or else you're just wasting time. You have to pay money to the goddess every time you reset the clock, and every time you do it, it costs more and more each time. So it was 200 gold that time. Next time I do it, it'll be 300. So there is sort of a hard stop, right? Because eventually it'll get so expensive that you won't be able to grind enough guys to um, yeah. to get the money that you need to reset the clock again. And if this is like the first one, and, and please you know, correct me if it has changed, but uh, if it's like the first one, you also don't want to keep... Like, I, I mean, each map, each scenario that you're being put into only lasts a certain amount of time. Like, there, like there's only a, a certain number of objectives you need to accomplish before you're moving on to a totally new map. Um, uh, no, actually, so the, not... the maps are, are pretty pretty constant, and you can warp back to any village you visited before using the goddess statues when you're in what's called global time, which is any time when you're not in a mission, which we'll get we'll show that off later on. Um, oh, wow, so that's all new stuff. That's, that's interesting. That sounds like they've... Uh, expanded things a little bit made it a little more um this sounds more intense to the, be the, honest the campaign is separated into different chapters and i don't think you can cross those particular ah. walls but um otherwise yeah you can go you know wherever um so you can see i'm just trying to squeak out a few more and then get in there in time um so other things to keep in mind you have a health bar if that runs out and you get killed all that happens is you get kicked back to the start of the level but that's you know occasionally calamitous if you were like right next to where you needed to be to finish uh your your health bar is also depleted whenever you dash which i've been doing so um 
you want to be careful about how much you use that. You can also dash in battle, and it makes fights go a lot faster, but your HP drains the whole time that you're doing it. Yeah. Um, so, oh, and I got the prompt that I have now leveled up to a point where I'm stronger than the evil boss at the end of the level. So, um, I... You I, greater than evil. I am greater than evil. It's a nice little algebraic expression. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I could run to the, the finish line right now, but... It's in quest time, everything moves faster. You earn gold faster, you earn levels faster. You can earn gold and buy items a lot faster. Um, so like, it makes sense to try and squeak as much out of every scenario as you possibly can. Um, here, I'm fighting the final boss. I'm gonna make probably pretty short work. I hope, because I have nine seconds left. Yeah, made it through that. There you go. Um, so, so one of the one of the interesting things that the original game did and wasn't very successful with, and I'm curious if they kept for the sequel, um, was in addition to like this regular RPG stuff, they had other weird yeah, modes. Yeah, I, like, I remember seeing that there was like weird like bullet hell shooter. There was like style. a bullet hell shooter, and there was like a strategy game. And uh, when they remade Half Minute Hero for XBLA, um, they they took that stuff away. I haven't encountered any of that stuff. I'm 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 uh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours in. Sure. Um, and I haven't encountered any of that stuff, but I'm about to hit a pretty major gameplay twist uh, here later in this video. Sure. Um, where I get a castle that I can control and take into battle with me. It's weird. What, is, what, is, what is your... It says GLV up there? G uh, so that's your global level. Uh, when you're okay. just in the world... Um, and you're not in a quest, your global level is, oh. a, is a constant. So you can see okay. me right now, I'm not in quest mode, I don't have any time limit. So I can fight guys and kill them and get gold and EXP, but it's not at the crazy boosted rate that I would yeah. get that at in quest time. Um, so if you, if you, you know, this is the real grind, I guess, because you're, you don't get to keep, you get to keep 10% of the gold that you have at the end of the quest, um, mm -hmm. but your level just reverts to whatever your global level is, which, Mine is level nine. So you can give yourself like a very, very minor boost in quests because whenever I start the quest, I will start at whatever my global level is. Does that make sense? Interesting. Um, yeah. Was that not in the first game either? No, this stuff is all new. This is all, uh, the first game was like very small chapters and when you finished a chapter, it was just restarting. Interesting. No, there's a lot more persistence then in this one. Um, Which is cool. Like that seems like a cool. Uh, that seems like the right direction for them to take this concept. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's keeping what's good about the concept and then adding even more onto it. Um, so not every uh, scenario involves, you know, leveling up, getting strong enough, and then killing the boss at the end. Sometimes they do some kind of clever stuff. Sometimes there's like a maze that you have to go through, or sometimes you have to defend a town for thirty seconds. Uh, or sometimes you have to uh, find something strong enough to kill you within 30 seconds, which is interesting because you don't want to reset time, and you also don't want to kill too many things, or else you'll level up and be yeah. too strong so nothing can kill you. Um, this is the uh, moving weaponized castle that I mentioned earlier. This game also has a delightful text skip button, which I believe I'm about to ah, exercise. Nice. Zoop. Very Go good. Gone. Um, so we're about to start another quest. Um, it is, it's it's challenging, not in like the way that RPGs are traditionally challenging. It's challenging because like you have to really plot your line and know, yeah. know like where you are and how far you are from one of those time reset statues at any given point. Because if you get too far away or you spend too much money and you don't have enough and you don't have enough time to go earn the gold that you need, like you have to start the whole thing over again. It's almost more like a puzzle or a light strategy game of like figuring out like what's the perfect line that I can go and then get back here and like do I have enough time to build up enough gold to buy this armor and yeah. that, that kind of stuff. Um, it's it's like we said earlier, it's very, very distilled, but it still hits like a lot of the major notes that a role playing game hits. Like you can see all the stuff I have on me, that sword, that sweet cowboy hat um, is all stuff that I bought and can equip. You also have party members that you can uh, take with you that will help you out in battle and you can unlock like a ton of them. You have a class that you can choose. It gives you like special proficiencies with certain weapon types and lets you use certain weapon skills a lot faster. Um, so there's definitely a lot of like meta management um, yeah. stuff that you expect from a role playing game. But um, for the most part, it's this idea of, you know, path management, uh, keeping your your health up and then just like trying to find the most direct route between you know wherever you are and whatever level you need to be at to to complete your objective 
it's a really interesting idea. Like, it's not... A, a, I'll be honest, it doesn't have, like, the depth of uh, a lot of role-playing games just because it is so bite-sized and so condensed. But I, I, I really enjoyed, like... I have, it doesn't. I've done like, a lot of extemporaneous grinding just to like get a sword that yeah. I probably don't even really need. And yeah, I, I mean, it feels like to me if it's like the original, it doesn't have necessarily the depth of a full R RPG, but it's also not the. It's not as shallow as you might think just from hearing the concept. Right, um, and that's sort of. I think that's why I shied away from the original because it didn't have that persistence, which I think made it even a, a little bit more shallow of an Absolutely. experience. Um, here I'm just trying to trying to grind up a little bit more. I haven't gotten that prompt yet. I'm not stronger than evil. Um, this this mission was interesting because I had to earn enough gold to buy this part that I could install in the uh, castle, mm -hmm. and it took me a while to figure out exactly what I was doing. If you don't pay attention, like it is really really easy to just run around and then run out of time and, and die. Um, but I do get it together. So this is the... I believed in you the whole time. I, well, I appreciate it. And you are my rock, and you are my wings. You help me fly despite the fact that you are a rock. Yeah. Which is which typically... It's, I help you fly, but I'm also kind of dragging you You're down. You're also kind of dragging me down. I would say that is a fair assessment of our relationship. So this is the moving well, castle. That's how you're, you're fighting them with the castle. Right. Some enemies are too big, and so you have to use your castle to fight them with. Pretty weird, man. I love that enemy's character design. It's a really nice looking game. It's so like, I don't know, the the pixel art in the overworld is so like yeah, simplistic you should, and stuff, but it, it- You should take a look at the um, the Xbox Live Arcade version um, because it was originally a PSP game. Then they brought it to Xbox Live Arcade and they thought, well, we can't have the pixel art. So they redid it with this really awful art style. Oh, did Just... they, give it, they give it that uh, Final Fantasy VI mobile treatment? Yeah, it's just terrible. Luckily, you had the option to just switch to pixel pixel art, which I did. Just skip right through all that. The writing's pretty funny, which you wouldn't know just because I've skipped through almost all of it. Um, but it's a it's a very it's a very cheeky game. Like, there's a, a character at the beginning that sort of provides a lot of character development and exposition, but he's just like saying it out loud, and so the people that are traveling with him are just like, who, who are you talking to? Yeah. What are you doing? It's a uh, yeah. I mean, you know, because it's playing on the the tropes of RPGs, just in its design, it seems like it does that in the plot as well, right? Like it's yeah, it is fun of very like. I mean, it does that every single mission where it's like I'm gonna destroy the world in 30 seconds with my spell of destruction. Like it's so like grandiose. Mm -hmm. um, I chopped down a tree. You proud of me? Yeah. Proud of me for the things you I managed did? to cut down a tree. Good job. Um. It's, it's got that very grandiose plot that is, I don't know, it actually sort of oscillates between being like a goofy joke and being like super serious RPG melodrama. Um, I don't know, it's weird. It's hard to tell like what parts of itself it's taking seriously and what it knows is like kind of a joke. Yeah, I feel like the original didn't have much that it took seriously, but I also could have just blocked that out because yeah. that stuff was so boring and the, the humor is what stood out. So this is the class change mechanic. Oh. Um, very, very, very simple, but like you pick, pick a class. Skippy's a class? Yeah, that's, that the, that's the no uh, class. That is the basic class. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go up here. This is the last sort of scenario that I did in this in this pre-recorded footage. <laughs> I don't do a great job with it. Sure. Because it's a really tricky sort of mechanic that involves. Well, I'll I'll wait and we'll get there. Uh, some of the other stuff that's in this Steam version uh, is there's a level editor, which is kind of cool. Oh, cool. There's uh, multiplayer. Does it have a? Do you know? Does it have Steam Workshop support? It does. So that... Full Steam Workshop support. Yeah. That's that's a really cool thing. Yeah, it's a really that... good idea. I don't know like how how much you can like tweak the scenario for each level, or if it's you know sort of basic, just like you make a map and then put a boss down, and then people have to get to it, or if you can do like more um, RPG makery stuff with it. Mm -hmm. Not exactly sure, but I mean, uh, even if it is just just map editing and and put a boss down and go get them, I think that people could you know do some pretty clever stuff with it. Yeah, um, and I'm just so I'm just so happy that. Uh that Japanese developers are bringing their weird games to Steam 
Mm -hmm. And like and, really and them, taking advantage of, of yeah, what that platform can do. Exactly. To see them not just publishing it on Steam, but really like, yeah, offering, like making it work with Steam in really interesting ways. Um, that's, that's really great. Um, there's also a, a, a multiplayer. I have absolutely no idea how that would work because I haven't. Interesting. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Um, but I am. I am eager to see what that's all about. Um, and then there's other stuff like, uh, you know, art gallery and stuff. There's a. There's a thing called Goddess Room where you can spend the actual money that you've earned in the game to, like, give the goddess different clothes and buy like different backgrounds and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why you do that and not buy like swords and stuff, but. Um, there that is, and I'm dead. No. I die a lot in this run because it takes me so long. There's like a button that you have to hold down with the house, with the with the castle right here, and that opens up a cave that you have to get to, right? But there's mm. so many tough dudes in between there and the cave, and you can't take the house with you to kill those tough dudes. And my stupid like Neanderthal brain didn't figure out what I needed to do. Uh, I almost ran out of time a couple times. There's actually one moment where I go to reset the clock and I don't have enough money, and I have like three seconds to earn enough money. And that's when the game gets like really genuinely exciting um, because it's, I don't know. Yeah, because it's like suddenly you're looking at that map and like, can I make this happen? Can I go find two things to kill before the clock runs out? So here I kind of figure it out. I can take the house up there, um, take out those guys. You don't get any gold or experience for killing them with the castle, though. You can really just use that to clear a path. So I figured that out, except, oh, wait, I'm level dumb. So that didn't Aww. work either. Um, it wasn't really until this level, like, I've, I've played for a, a couple hours now, and it really wasn't until this level that, like, the potential depth of the game really started to sink in. Because yeah. once you start layering in these other mechanics, then the sort of puzzly nature of the game really starts to flesh out. So I, another another thing that the original had that I'm curious to see if this one had is uh, the the quests were often um, in addition to whatever your main goal was there were like side quests mm -hmm. essentially right yeah that's what I, I just did I just oh, did that great uh, I didn't know that I was doing it because I didn't talk to that dude before but yeah it was a bounding quest here to go out and kill these two really tough monsters which I did and then I got this like fry guy looking castle exterior <laughs> um, which I really really love. Um, yeah. So here I'm still not quite figuring it out, still not leveling up. I just like killed everything, so there's no potential for me to earn any gold or experience. I think this is when I almost chomped it. Um, pro tip, don't do what I just did. Like, what am I doing? Just wasting time. Mm -hmm. um, it will take you a couple runs at certain missions um, because you can get to a point where, yes, you've figured out how to do it, but also you have let you've had to reset the clock like a few times and then all of a sudden your potential to earn money. I man, I did so bad. Okay, this is it. I have <laughs> three seconds yeah, and not enough gold. And so I had to like kill those people, get back 2,400 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Nicely done though. I mean, not nicely uh, done. I'm a dullard and couldn't figure nicely that Nicely done for having messed up so badly. Yeah, so um, now I've remembered that I have to kill things to level up. The, the basics of the, the game, basic, you finally... The very first thing, and then I ran into fire, and ugh, not a great run. Uh, the nice thing, though, too, is, like, even if you mess up irredeemably and need to just start over from the beginning of a quest, it's never going to be, like, more than, you know, like, what, ten, five, ten minutes back? Oh, yeah, no, I, if, if if that, even. Yeah, um, it's because it's such a fast-paced, fast-moving game, you're never, like... It's, it's not like dying in an RPG where the last save point was you know, three hours ago or something. No, yeah. Um, I mean, this is probably up to this point the longest mission I played. And even this, I think we've only been going at it for like four minutes, maybe. It's yeah. It's really, it's not, I, I really like the pace of it. And I kind of almost wish, and like, I know that the whole idea was that they ported this specifically to be on on Steam, but like this bad boy on Vita, like, or, or yeah. 3DS, like I, I, I would tear through that. Um, maybe I should just pick up the PSP game. Yeah, you should. It's it's worth uh it's worth giving a shot. The uh, I'm worried because like it sounds the, like it sounds like kind of a step backwards, but it probably is uh, comparatively. But it's still good, I think. Uh, the it's the side stuff, it's the 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 shooter stuff and the strategy stuff that doesn't really work that well. What's but what the actual the issue with it? Just was it fun? It's not very good. It's not as well designed or as interesting um, compared to what you're doing here. Which is running in a loop and hitting fire occasionally. And, exactly. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, I, I'm worried that it would be such a step back just because this this version sort of layers on a lot of constant progression stuff, and it's hard for me to get like super involved in a role playing game that doesn't have those kinds of hooks in it. I'm not gonna lie, the original game does not have the uh, the giant castle that you can walk around in. Right. So, like, what's even the point? Yeah, I don't. The, the giant McDonald Land castle. <laughs> um, so this is when I put it together. Now I'm strong enough. Now I can kill that guy. Now I can go eat those wolves. Now I'm in the castle. There's like a really nice like. It's simple, but like I really like the. That distilled idea that you know you're doing all the same stuff that you do in a role playing game. You just have Castles. to do it super super fast. Castle's eyes just look, he looks stone. He looks super, super high. Well, maybe that's yeah. what his, his bushy exterior is made out of. That kind city. Yep, yep. Do you know, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I love his fighting style, too. It's just like, boop, 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 boop. Uh, anyway, that is uh, uh, Half Minute Hero, the second coming. This looks great. I'm yeah. going to play this. It's fun. I've been really, really enjoying it. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Phil, thanks for joining me. Anytime. Uh, we'll see you guys again real soon. Bye!